Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Lord, we thank you for another day that you've Lord, we thank you for another day that you have given us, and I am so excited, and I'm absolutely ecstatic, amen, to be coming this Monday morning with another YouTube, Facebook Live, and Vimeo.com, amen, where you can find us on those platforms. I'm on Facebook, I'm on YouTube, and I'm on Vimeo dot com as well so i'm trusting that the lord will bless y'all real real good as you are listening to this message i'm going to thank you all for tuning in amen praise god now i got one i got a hot message to talk about today and that's what we will talk about today amen is a message dealing with the family and i'll tell you this right now i love family amen and I, and the message that we're going to be dealing with is the message that's going to really bless you guys glory be to god as we start teaching and talking about situations with family. And I think you guys are going to really enjoy this. Matter of fact, let me pull up my share screen and show you guys what we're going to be talking about today. Amen. What we're going to be talking about today, amen, is releasing family line of fence, letting it go. We're going to be talking about releasing family line of fence and letting it go. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now. All of our families have gone through offenses in a family. All of our families, there's not a perfect family in the planet. Matter of fact, I ask the Holy Spirit to help us to teach this message with wisdom, with love, with kindness, and have it biblically based. And Father God, we're not here to tear down anyone's family. And, and Lord God, in all of our family, there are people who have dropped the ball in their younger years, or even in their elder years, some of them have dropped the ball, and there are many who have been wounded and hurt. And in this message, I want to give some insight to help bless people to try to move past it or process through the healing. Oh, I never want to start teaching without thanking you guys. Many of you have uh, supported us. Amen. Uh, with a cash app $5 donation. Evelyn and I pre appreciate that tremendously. It's been a blessing to us. If you want to cash app us with a $5 donation, amen. That's General Ivory Hopkins. That's right, dollar sign, General Ivory Hopkins. And if you do not feel led to sow anything, just enjoy the message. That's what's really important anyway. So we're going to be talking about releasing family line of fence and letting it go. Now, the spiritual and emotional goal is to be healed and released from wounds in the family so that the victim can move forward with life. And that's what this is all about. And what I'm talking about today, I'm going to try to give some insight. Now, I'm going to say this. If you are an individual that does not want to forgive, does you want to hold a grudge, you want to hold on to it, I won't be very much help to you. Now, and something did happen. You were absolutely done wrong. Let's get that straight up, straight up. You were done wrong. Some of you were abandoned. Some of you were rejected. Some of you may have been verbally or physically abused. No one in this message is going to tell you, just get over it. No, I don't operate like that. I, I, I'm one that does counseling. I, and also we do deliverance and we pray for the Holy Spirit to do inner healing. Now, one of the things that I found when I've ministered to people with wounds from family, whether it's mother wounds or daddy wounds or just wounds with family issues, is that I find something what we call arrested development. Let me, let me bring that right down here. I find what we call arrested development. Amen. This is this is where in uh you you're in in the attacks in the situation that you've gone through in your life, you have found it to begin to affect your emotions in a sense, where in you are having trouble in the area of developing. Amen. Now look what the apostle Paul said here in the book of First Corinthians, chapter 13. Now, one of the effects again of damage when you grew up. It arrests your development. And listen what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, 11. And by the way, 
Paul was talking about spiritual growth here and everybody worth their soul know that 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is predominantly clearly talking about, amen, charity, love, for being the greatest of all the gifts. But listen to what Paul said here. And this is what I have found when I'm dealing and ministering to, including myself. I had to be healed from wounds in my life that happened when I was a child that tries to disrupt, interfere with my spiritual growth as an adult. Amen. Now, when this happens to you, you find yourself many times, even though you are a grown man, a grown woman, you are an adult. But there are times that when you get in a certain environment or, or around certain people who do the same thing to you that was done when you grew up, you find yourself reverting back to childish types of behavior. Listen what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians, and I use other translation, but King James is one that I lead with most of the time. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, and this is talking about when I became mature, I put away childish things, and that is the goal. Listen at this in the 1 Corinthians 13, uh, 13, 11. Let me get that 11 in there. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When we look at it in the literal standard version, listen at this. When I was a child, I was speaking as a child. I was thinking as a child. I was reasoning as a child. And when I have become a man, I have made useless the things of a child. Now, there's importance to it while I'm using these translations. And then when we look in the Weymouth New Testament, 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says, when I was a child, I talked like a child, felt like a child, reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I, I put from me childish ways. All right. Now, one of the things that I have found when you've got a wounds that have happened to you growing up, they kind of have you come in the voice or you start begin to, to start spoke or speaking and talking like a child. And I'm not talking about babbling, but you're holding on to things that in your adult life that happened to you as a child. And every now and then, even when it came to deliverance or inner healing, when I've talked to people in counseling or ministering deliverance to them, sometimes I hear them actually sound like a little child grown person, strong academic person, entrepreneur person, spiritually blessed by God person, talented person. But when they start going over or dealing with wounds from childhood, they start speaking and talking in childless manners. This verse also uh, says here, they begin to understand and start the thinking and reasoning uh, uh, and, and uh, reason like a child. Now, here goes the thing that this. When you get hard, hit hard uh, in the area of your emotions getting wounded, when it starts bringing up these wounds, you begin to process just as if you were a child. Now, every single but one of us know being grown folks, I'm going to do something here. Amen. Being grown folks, we know right well, stuff happens. People are not perfect. Whether they be daddy, mama, whoever, ain't nobody, ain't none of us absolutely perfect. But look what these manifestations do here. And I love working with this. I'm going to highlight these three here. Now, check out. Look what they do. Number one, you, you are here you are an adult looking to be healed, but you're still acting like your you're things that you're grasping. You seem like you understand them like a child. You start thinking like a child. Let me tell you something uh, when, when you're healed. When you're healed as a grown person, you begin to realize, and you've even had children of your own. When you step back and look at life and look at the failures that parents did, failures that happened in your family, you begin to start thinking more maturely. But when you do not grow up and get healed in those areas, you begin to understand, you begin to think in the realm of a child and you reason things in that way. Now, the goal, the real goal is, is to get to the place, is to get healed where I can just put away childish things. Got that? I have, I have, and I love the way it said in one of the translations, I have made useless the things of a child. In other words, when God 
and heals you. He can bring you to a place of healing until you're not even going to allow that which happened in the past. That, yes, your daddy dropped the ball. What are you going to do with your life? Yes, your mama might not have been there. What are you going to do with your life? In other words, God has blessed you despite it. God has blessed you despite rejection in your family line. God has blessed you despite it. And when you begin to get healed, you're able to put it away. You'll remember it happened. Listen, healing and forgiveness is not loss of memory or loss of accountability. I'm going to say that one more time. Healing and forgiveness is not lack of accountability. Neither is it a lack of memory. Now, let me go to with the scripture that I find why it's so difficult. And I'm as I'm talking right here, I know that there are some people that have been offended or their dad dropped the ball or their mom dropped the ball. Being that failed you, they were wrong. And you are not giving in because you're holding so much bitterness in your heart that you cannot allow the healing. Because do you know sometimes in order to get healed from things done in your past, you have to start building something different in your future? Now, look what Proverbs says here. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19. A brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a, of a castle. Get that? A brother that is offended is harder to be one than a strong. In other words, offense, when someone is offended, because some of you that are listening at me, you are offended at the way mom or dad or family member or somebody did you. You are offended, and it is controlling your life. Proverbs 18, uh, 19 says, and Young's literal translation says, a brother transgressed against is as strong is as a strong city and contentions as the bars of a palace. Now, here goes the thing that, 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 that makes this so hard to get healed is because the offense actually did happen. I'm going to come off street and come back to this. I want you to hear me. What makes it so difficult for us as humans, and I'm going to say this, and I'll probably make a, few, a couple of people angry, but listen to me real good. I don't know of any human being that is perfect. I don't know of any human being or any family that does not have issues. Now, as if you stay with me with this message, I am going to give some insights about how to engage and also how not to engage. But I'm going to say this one thing to you all. The way that God has created us, he's created us in such a way that he gives us a way to get healed from things that have happened in our past, but holding on to it becomes toxic. I'm going to share this with you guys and listen at this. I never will forget, and by the way, the individual does not mind me sharing this. Sometimes when I share things in my teachings here with you guys, I don't want you to think, oh, if you have a session with him he's going to tell your business no this here i have permission to share this individual said to me uh i'm calling you brother hopkins because i want to run by you what i'm thinking about doing concerning my father who abandoned us he left me as a child and he said she's the lady was saying she said, said uh, now I've, I've i've gone through healing Inner healing, I've gone through deliverance, inner healing by the Holy Spirit, and I've gone through deliverance. And she said, now, here goes what my plans are. I said, okay, talk to me, sis. Tell me what you're thinking of. She said, I, am, I have contacted my father, and I'm going to see him. He said, yes, he would meet me, and I'm going to see him. And the first question I asked her, I said, I have one question to ask you. When you go see your father who did abandon you, no one is that's no one is even arguing that point. It did happen. Now you have searched him out and he has agreed to see you. I said, I have one question. She said, What is that? I said, Tell me your expectation. When you get there, what is your expectation. Young lady eased back from the camera, sat back in her chair. 
She said, here goes my expectation. She said, number one, when I go to meet my dad, I am not looking for him to make up the things he failed with when I was a small child. I'm not a child anymore, and I don't need a daddy. He is my father. He is my biological father. I'm going to give him the opportunity to get to know who I am now, if he wants it. If he does not want that, I listen, her main deal was this. I'm not dying, leaving this on me. That was her attitude. Are you hearing me? This is grown for talk, okay? Now, this girl got healed. She Now she has moved from thinking like a child and acting like a child. Now she's moving on to maturity and healing. And her way of processing it is, I want to contact him. And when I do contact him, he can either or. Now, she said, if he, I said, well, what happens if he says he doesn't want to see you or he doesn't is not receptive? She says, well, then I will just know that I reached out and I will move on with my life. And she said, well, Hopkins, even if he we have a great day that day, even if he meeting me, he says, I'm sorry or whatever. She said, I'm not looking for him to go back in time and make what he missed and dropped the ball with. I said, wow. I said, so, so if, if he's not receptive, you're going to just move on. She said, I've been doing it anyway. She said, and if he is receptive, one thing is going to be clear is I'm a grown woman. I am a mature woman. He wasn't there and he cannot make that up. Now, if he, by his acknowledging of what he's done to me as a child to our family, if he wants to build a relationship forward, I'm open to that. But I don't go with any expectations like a little girl that's trying to get up with daddy to try to recapture what she lost in the fifth grade, in the fourth grade, in the third grade. Because she says, God brought me through that. And I am a married woman now. And I have children, and I want at least a chance for my children to get to know their grandfather. If he doesn't allow that, me and my kids will be just fine. Now, I understood what she was saying. And now, I'm going to say this to some of you out there. Some of you out there, you're so angry and you're so hurt. You're trapped in that zone of the past. You're just trapped there. And what have you? I mean, I'm telling you, baby girl, young man, listen to me. You've got to find a way to allow God and, and God, life and wisdom. God, life and wisdom. God, life and wisdom to bring you to a place to move on past that because you're not going to ever be able to get the days lost with in the situation where he dropped the ball. And I will tell you something else while we're doing this teaching. You have dropped the ball in life. You have messed up sometime. You have done things that when you think about it, now I know we live in this jacked up society, lying to yourself you are. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to tell you, you're lying to yourself. You we're living in a society that actually tries to teach and tell people that people can't make mistakes. Whatever happened in the past, that's who you are right now. And all of us know that that is not true, but some of us want to believe that lie. Some people, many of us, I've done it. Some of you have done it. have messed up in the past. You sure did. And when you look back at it, you hurt somebody. You dropped the ball. And now, it, guess what? You've changed. You have changed. So don't play with me and tell me that you won't expect me to get in that zone as a teacher that people can't change. Because if you could change, so could someone else. Now I'm gonna move on past that because that's mature thinking. That's just mature thinking. So this young lady getting back to her, she went to see her father. Her father and her had a long talk about his absence, had a long talk about the way that he did her. And the two of them, it really funny. 
it really felt like they don't even know where to begin at. And they be, and and I told her, I said, your best way of beginning is from where you are right there and build forward. And ain't no need him trying to come in there like now he's dead and he's gonna correct something in her life. Bottom line, that that train has left the station. But y'all can get in there and at least acknowledge the failure, the mistake. If one's repenting, if one's owning it to it, acknowledge it and then build from there. And you probably never will have, you'll never have little girl, daddy, little girl, mama relationship. It won't happen. That train has left the station. And I'm just, I'm just a realist. That train, I'm going to say it again, that train has left the station. So if you are trying to make someone pay for what they missed when you were 11, 12 years old, grow up. That train has left the station. Let me get back into this teaching because I'm going to dig in it a little bit more. I love that Holy Spirit has me teaching controversial things. Listen to this. Offense in the family can become, can become not only personal, but it, it can become generational as well. I'm going to say this again. Offense in the family can become not only personal, meaning something you're having with that individual, but it can become generational as well, meaning this. I could be so offended, and I, I praise God, I'm not, thank God for my mom and dad. Thank you, mommy. Thank you, daddy. But I could be so offended at things that happen in my life as a child until I refuse to allow my children to ever have anything to do with their, with their family. In short, this can become a generational stronghold. Now, I hear somebody, I hear you, I heard what you're saying. Well, Brother Hopkins, sometimes you don't even want your children around them. There are cases, there are situations wherein that is the answer, that you don't go back deal with it and that you don't bring your children into it if it's that extreme and toxic. Follow me. Now, but offenses in the family can become a generational stronghold until not you're hurt and because of the way that you were hurt, the family, your children, the next generation never gets to know who the others are in the family. That can happen. And as I said earlier, there are situations where in Pursuing it or bringing your children into it is not wise. It can be toxic, depending on what the gravity of the situation is. Got that? Number two, the deeper the hurt and the fence, the harder it becomes to move past it. That goes for everybody. Even Audrey has gone through that before, where something has hurt me and a family member hurt me, and it has taken me a good while to get past it, love them dearly, but the pain and the hurt of what they did is taking a while. But the, the spiritual part of me, the emotional part of me realizes that I cannot afford to allow that situation to cause me to become toxic. Got that? And especially when they're trying to reach out. So the deeper the hurt or and offense, the harder it comes to move past it. But the goal is, once again, the goal is, the glory be to God, is to move as Got that? Number three, offenses in the family can change a person in such a way until they live their lives through a wound and a hurt. How many of y'all want to live your life through a wound and a hurt? I don't want to do that. This is one of the dangers of when you get hurt or wounded in families, that it can cause the offense in a family can change you. Now, you know, you can say all you want to. Ain't nobody changing me. Stop it. Just stop lying to yourself. It changed you in such a way until you've disconnected with allowing someone to come in. Even when someone comes in your life and tries to love you, a wound and a hurt unhealed from family can cause you to put up a wall to an innocent person, to someone that has done nothing wrong. I remember uh, dealing with an individual one time and a young man said to the said to the young lady he said to her I don't know who hurt you but I'm not him I don't know what happened with you growing up but right now I want the mature woman that's standing in front of me you need to get healed from the child that was wounded because it's messing you up 
from being who you who, and walking in the full potential of who you could be as an adult. People, offenses in the family can change a person in such a way until they live their lives through the wound and a hurt. Are you living your life through a wound and a hurt? Are you realizing that I need to be healed? I need to be healed in the here and now so that I can move forward. Is everybody hearing me? So that I can move forward. Now, here goes a list of the things that I have encountered uh, of offenses in the family. Number one, I, I, here we go. We got rejection and abandonment. Many of us that are listening, but you listening at me, the wound that is in your life is a wound of rejection and abandonment. Listen, I'm going to say this honestly to you. There comes a point that we admit we've been rejected and abandoned, and there comes a point where we begin to live and go forward. Because I'm going to tell you something. Every one of us, every single one of us that have been rejected and abandoned in life, God has made sure that you have not been rejected and abandoned in all areas of your life. There are areas of your life that despite the rejection, look at God. Despite the abandonment, look at God. Look, Moses had to be put in the water in a basket and pushed down the river in order for Pharaoh's daughter to find him. God did not leave Moses without having that nurturing that he needed. In the seventh chapter of Acts, it talks about he was nursed in his mother and father's house for a number of months. And because of the condition that was set that caused uh, babies to be killed, Moses was actually nourished in the, by, in the house of Pharaoh. So many of us, God had a way. Now I know somebody go, well, you just don't know. I've been in the foster care and I was treated bad there. But here you are today still striving, still living, despite it all. And I'm going to tell you, the goal for our lives is to get healed from the past so that we can move on with our present. Because at some time after the hour or another, you're going to have to get to this place. Are you hearing me? People, as I'm teaching this teaching, I know there are people sitting out there they will come up almost like a badge of honor. But you ain't gone through what I've gone through. And you ain't felt you're right. But the Redeemer the one that still blessed you, the one that still gave you life. I'm talking about our Redeemer. Despite that rejection, he still kept you. And some of you, I'm talking to the same folk now. Some of you, you're born again still, ain't you? Guess what? That could, the enemy could not stop that. Now, another area that of offense in the family is being treated different than others in the family. That there is another one that the enemy uses. Being treated different than others in the, in, in the family. Now, I'm gonna tell you a strange thing that I saw, and some of you may have seen, it, seen this as well. Uh, I have seen people who were treated differently in the family. Now, I'm gonna highlight this one because I'm gonna say something. As we say, grab your seat, Agnes. It's getting ready to come. I have seen people that were treated different than others in the family. And as their elders got older, the one that was treated different in the family is the one that ends up watching out, taking care of, or looking out for the very parent, grandparent, or family member that treated them different than the others. Isn't that amazing? Now, I have seen it more than one time. And some of you may be living that now. I talked to an individual just the other day. And we were, we were talking about rejection. We were talking about abandonment. And the person said, she said, you know what, Brother Ivory? It almost makes me upset. But at the same time, I know God is dealing with me on the inside. And I said, what do you mean? Said, my very father that was not there for me and my mother, now in his old age, guess who ends up taking care of him? I went, I said, wow. She said, yes, I'm the one now. The rejected child is taking care of the father who abandoned him. But I'm going to say something to y'all that know the word of God. Isn't it amazing that Joseph's family, Joseph's brethren, throwed him in a pit, darn near sold him to slavery. Are you hearing me? And Joseph went through the pit. He went through Potiphar's wife lying on him. Joseph ended up in jail. 
And God turns around and through all that had happened by his brothers, by his family, Joseph ends up being the one at the end who actually saves them in a famine. Life is funny. How many body, anybody can tell me life is funny? Now, Joseph could have had held bitterness all that his life. Joseph could have took and lived his whole life around being thrown in a pit. My family wasn't even with me. But Joseph kept right on dreaming. He kept right on being the, with the integrity that God put in. And at the end of it, you know what Joseph said to his family? He said to his brethren, y'all did this to me for my hurt but God worked it out for my good. I'm gonna tell some of y'all, you might be the stones that been rejected, but they be the one that become chief cornerstone. So do not allow the enemy to play a okie doke on you and to make you feel glory be to God, hallelujah, that uh, the Holy Spirit cannot take a bad abandonment, a bad rejection, a bad, come on now, that, that the Spirit of God can take the worst thing in your life and say, look at me, I'm God, I'll still use them. All right, here goes another one. And sometimes those hurts are made to feel unwanted, made to feel just like they don't want you. But guess what? Even if that is the case, you have got to move forward, press forward, feeling unseen, unheard, and forgotten. That can happen. And this, this big one, that, this next one right here is a hard one. I've never seen some of the stuff that I've seen people do to their families blows my mind. Molestation, rape, and, and, and betrayal. Are you hearing me? I have seen people have to get healing from being molested, raped, and betrayed right in their own family. But God still healed it. I'm going to tell you this, too. I don't know whether y'all ever seen this. I have seen people who have gone through a lot who have a lot of reasons not to deal with nobody, a lot of reasons to be unlovable, a lot of reasons to be mean-spirited, but yet something about them still has a kindness inside of them. I want to tell you, the enemy does this to try to destroy who you are, who we are. Now, here's another realm where you tell, you're telling people what happened and nobody believes you. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about wounds that I have seen operate in families. Abuse, verbal and emotional or physical. This is the stuff God come to heal. All of these are valid things. Being pulled into drama in the family and you end up with the bad name. But yet God is there to heal today. Generational bitterness and anger. Just generational bitterness and anger. Wherein this stuff has just happened. Your, your auntie and them treated your mom bad and then y'all are born and they start treating y'all the same way. And you're wondering, why do they act like that with us? It's a generational stronghold of bitterness and anger. This morning we're talking about praying and getting healed. Or praying and seeking God, seeking the Holy Spirit to heal these errors. And listen, let me say this to you all. This that I'm talking about today, it is a process, not an event. Don't let nobody lie to you and tell you, well, I'm just going to pray, praise God, and it's all over. No, no, it is a process. It is a journey, but I think it's a journey that you'll be able to make it. Are you hearing me? The effects on the family line, when offense, the effects of the family line offense causes emotionally. It causes one to become hurt. It opens door to bitterness and unforgiveness, and you can't wait to leave. Got that? It causes hurt bitterness and unforgiveness and you can't wait to leave now let me talk about can't wait to leave i'm gonna park right here and cannot wait to leave this here right here and some of y'all have talked to me yeah you have this place right here can't wait to leave so what happens is you have made choices we've done it made choices can't wait to leave can't wait to get away from that and you leave anyway and you can even make even a worse mistake. Are you hearing hear me? You can even make a, let me say, leaving anyway, you can, you can even make a worse mistake. Got that? And there are some of us that because of what we felt about home, because of the way we felt rejected, we couldn't wait to get out of there. But what we didn't realize, an unhealed, broken person who can't wait to get out often, not always the case, 
not always the case, but a broken, wounded person can leave home and run right into the hands of a person that repeats the same thing to your life. And I hear it hundreds of times. You could not wait to get away from home, so you hooked up with a narcissist. Couldn't wait to get away from home, and you hooked up with a person that was abusive and controlling. My God, Lord, heal us. That's all I got to say. Lord, heal us, because we're human, and we make so many mistakes in our pain and in our hurt. Emotional damage in choices because of family wounds that need to be healed. And this is what this was really saying. You're dealing with emotional damages. Let me highlight that. Boom. Emotional damage in choices because of the family wounds that need to be healed. Lord, just help heal us from emotional attachments that we have made that put us in a vulnerable position. Let's go on a little bit further. Attacking, attaching to unhealthy relationships. Got that? Attaching ourselves to unhealthy relationships. Got that? And I got to get this right here cleared up. Not only do we attach ourselves to unhealthy relationships, but anger and bitterness in relationships due to unhealed wounds. Now, what do I mean when I say this one? Let me highlight this one. Y'all know I love my crayons. Woo, I'm having fun today and I'm gonna take my time. Now, anger and bitterness in relationships due to unhealed wounds. This here means, glory be to God, you are actually at the point wherein you begin to attack somebody that means you well because of the wound that's in you. Are you understanding me? You can literally find a good mate, good people in your life, but because of the anger and bitterness in your life due to the, what had happened to you as a child, without that being healed, you're going to take that anger wherever you go in relationships. You're going to take it to the classroom with you. You're going to take it, glory be to God, on the job. You're going to take it if anybody tries to date you or want to marry you, if you're not careful, that wound will become a part of damage of your relationship. This is why it's important for the Holy Spirit and the time of healing to address and heal us forward. Listen, only thing I want to go in the past and get is put it in the rear view mirror. When I look at the past wounds in my life, God, I just want your Holy Spirit to help me to examine it, to move forward past it, and to know how to live beyond it. Listen, you, if you're not careful, that wound and, wound and hurt will cause you to cut people off because you're wounded and unhealed. Just cut folks off, whack them, boom. That's why I have so many relationships, one after another, that does not succeed because you cut people off. Now, I'm going to tell you why, why this happens. We operate in cutting people off so easy because the ones who should have nurtured us, the ones who should have shown us affection, did not because of their own bondage. I would be honest with you. What I have learned in life, that people that are wounded hurt people, hurt people. This is what I've learned. Y'all know this. So in our lives, when we have been done like that as a child, come on, we will childishly, whenever anyone looks, acts, and sounds slightly like what we're trying to get away from, we will cut that person off and we will cut them off because of the wounds and hurts that we've already dealt with. Now, we're going to look at a number of things here and, and we hope we can line this up, amen, that's so that it'll be readable. What is the first step, okay? I'm going to try to line this up readable, so bear with me, sweeties. What is the first step of getting healed? The first step is, at, is, is admitting you are hurting. This is number one. Just admit, I'm hurting. That's the first step. Own it. Admit that you're hurting. And understanding, next, number two, that's number one, admitting that you are hurting. Number two, bear with me, honey, bear with me. All right, we go. Number two is understanding that you're not dealing with flesh and blood only. Now, this here, starts, start, we're starting to get a little spiritual here. And I hope that we can go there with, say, folk. Listen, step number one, admit you're hurting. Admit it. It's okay. I was wounded growing up. 
It had an effect on my life. And, and I'm trying to, Holy Spirit, help me to get away from that strong city that's like Mars. Help me, Holy Spirit, to detach from it, get healed from it, and move forward. Because I got a lot to do in life besides be stuck here. So number two, understanding that you're not dealing with flesh and blood. Um, I'll, I'll highlight that. You're not dealing with flesh and blood. And to someone that's not born again, you're not going to get this. But to someone that is born again, we are dealing with principalities and powers that have had people in our lives, them bound up so that they can't operate the way God's plan for us is. And also, we get bound up because they have inflicted on us the stronghold that had them. So we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. I will say this. The person who abandoned you is guilty of their actions, but the spirit behind their actions is strongholds that are in their life. If you got to have a stronghold to abandon your own flesh and blood, you got to have a stronghold in your life to, to molest your own child. That is, so, that is a bondage. You got to have a stronghold in your life to have children that are born by you and you treat one one way and make another feel like they're not even a part of the family. That's a stronghold. It's, everybody got me here. Let me go to the next one here. Praise God. All right. No, 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 no. I don't want that. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. The next one is number three is damages in, in our families are stirred up by the enemy. The damages in our family is literally stirred up by the enemy. That's right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. The enemy has stirred this up in our bloodline and he meant what he's doing. So the strongholds we're dealing with, the enemy stirred it up. Now, look at Hickel's number four. Number four, the person. This is number four. Bear with me, sweetheart. I love my little crowns here. Ah, that looks good in purple. The person treating you that way is bound themselves. Are you hearing me? They're, they're bound themselves. You, you Listen, if you look at life without the equation of a spiritual discernment, you will think, actually, this all just come from mankind. I'm telling you, this was set up by the enemy to bring you into bondage. Also, I will say to you, number five, put your attention. Now, this is number five. There we go. Number five, put your attention to getting healed without expecting anything from those who hurt you. Sometimes people, they say, well, you know, I know I can get free if, if someone if, if so and so stop rejecting me. No, I'm going to get free whether you quit or not. I am, I'm not going to put the power of me becoming whole in the hands of someone who's so bound they rejected me, so bound they abandoned me, so bound they abused me with their mouth. I'm not going to wait for that individual to change. I'm going to work on my own healing. Is anybody hearing me? So put your attention. Now, now, now when you do three, two, three, and four, you're not rustling against flesh and blood. You realize it's a demonic thing that is using them. They may or may not even have sense enough to know that the enemy is using the way you do know it. You know that this is nothing but the enemy. They were bound up, don't even realize the depth of what they're doing. And I'm going to put number five in effect. Come on, somebody. I'm going to put number five in effect. I'm going to put my attention to getting healed without expecting anything from those who hurt me. I'm not going to expect anything. Now, listen, you are brother Ivory. Suppose they do change. Suppose they do say they're sorry. That is a plus. But let me help you. If you don't tell me you're sorry, if you don't say, well, I don't see what you're talking about, Ivory. Guess what? I'm not putting in your hands the power of my freedom. Are you hearing me? Uh, God, I ask you to heal me forward from past wounds so that I can mature spiritually, so I can grow up because I'm not a child anymore. Come on, somebody. I'm not a little child, and I'm not going to allow these childish wounds to keep defining my life. I refuse to allow that to keep happening. Number six, or is anybody with me? I felt like preaching and bear with me. Number six, ask God, I like this. 
Number six, ask God to help you release the bitterness that I forgive. What? Whoa, what now, now, Ivory? You were doing good, brother Ivory, until you put that one on me. Number five, ask God to help you release the bitterness and unforgiveness. Why? Glad you asked. The reason why I'm telling you to ask God to help you release it, because with this here, it is toxic. What happens is that bitterness on the inside, that unforgiveness on the inside of us, it is toxic. Look, I've been there. I've had things happen in family where I did not want to forgive them. Well, I did not want to hear about them, even apology. But God had to deal with my heart. And I realized this, talking to them that are saved, talking to them that's supposed to be going by the book. The Bible says he forgives our debts as we forgive our debtors, meaning the debtors, the people did do something to us. And the Bible says that the Lord forgives our debts as we forgive our debtors. The next thing is, in Romans, it talks about vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. God didn't, God created them, and it's God that has to deal with them. Well, I'll be glad when God gets them. Well, it looked like to me, God ain't doing nothing to them. That is in God's department. But for your healing, I'm going to go back. Number five, put your attention to getting healed without expecting anything from those who are you. Number six. Ask God to help you to release the bitterness and unforgiveness. Why? Because it's doing things to your soul. It's doing things to your emotion. It's stealing who you are. It's not only messing with destiny. It's also messing with who you were created to be. God ain't never created me to be so angry and hold so much bitterness and unforgiveness until they can't see the love, the gifting, and the grace that he put in my life. God didn't create us that way. Let's go to number seven. Let's go to number seven. Bear with me, sweetheart. God, right, God, I, I'm, I'm loving this. Oh, man. Um, let's go to number seven. I'm going to spread them so it'd be easier for me to even read to you guys. Our next one, holding on to the wounds and hurts are very toxic to your emotions, mental health, and spiritual health. Holding on to wounds and hurts is very toxic to your emotional health, your mental health, and your spiritual health. This is why you have to be healed. Now, I know someone sitting back there is going, are you acting like they didn't do nothing, Ivory? Holding on to wounds and hurts are very toxic to your emotional, mental, and spiritual health. And it has your arrested, your development arrested to the time it happened. In other words, here you are, a grown man or woman, and you're sitting around trapped in 12, 13, 15, three years old, being trapped in a time zone of a wound that happened when you were growing up. I, my desire for God for all of us is that the Holy Spirit give us the inner healing from those grief, wounds, and pains, and that the Holy Spirit also help us to release ourselves from the bitterness and the unforgiveness and let God deal with them and also have ourselves at a place where in, whether they change or not, I'm going to change for the better. And here goes another one, number eight. This is a biggie. Number eight, this is a biggie now. Start living your life beyond. Good Lord, I thank you for the truth here. Start building your life beyond the offense. At some time or another, we're going to have to start living our life beyond the offense. Yeah, but you, yeah, but it happened in 19. So I, please, please, people, people. At some point, you have to say, come to this century. Lord, help bring my emotional pains, wounds, and hurts. Help bring them up to the here and now. Help bring them up so that I can go on past that. Because at some time or another, you're going to have to start living beyond the offense. Because you don't, because guess what? And this will make some people mad. You are more than the wounds you've gone through. You are much more than the pains that you experience. Are you hearing me? They did happen to your life, but they don't have to be, take your life. You may need a number nine, number nine. 
you may need to get away from the person and the situation. I told you I'm a realist. Sometimes the road to healing is getting away from them. So I would not teach this teaching uh, unbalanced. Like, you know, forgive, run on up in there, you know, keep chasing down behind. That's not what I'm teaching. That's not what I'm teaching. Do you may need to get away from the person and the situation. That may be a part of what it takes for your healing. Now, you're hearing me. But even when you have to get away from them because they're not changing, guard your heart so that they won't continue to control you while you're even out of their presence. Did anybody hear that? Number 10, if you're trying, if, if you try, hold on, let me get this correct so I can even die, we go. If you try to engage them, understand you both will have to build forward. You can't go back and fix anything. If it is a healthy situation where you're trying to engage them, you're going to have to engage them from addressing what happened and then moving forward and building something different. Are you hearing me? I personally have never had an experience where I have not been there for a child. I, I, that's the experience I have never had. But if I had have had that experience, during the time when I was on drugs, because I told you, I used to be a drug addict. Oh, you understand? I, I, like, I like sharing the fact that I was jacked up, okay? At that time, thank God, I wasn't so high on drugs that I abandoned my children. But if that was the case, God has done saved me now. God has done help wash my life up. I would try to bring healing to my son or daughter for me not being there. But I also have to understand, I have to own the fact that what I've done to them, they may not be receptive. And if that is the case, at least I tried. Are you hearing me? I'm going to say this to a crowd out there. There is a crowd of you listening at my voice. You back in the day, when you were younger, when you had children in your early days, you changed. You're not that same man or woman. You are somebody different today. But you do understand, when you did that back there then, you caused that door to be opened as to why, although saved, although loving the Lord Jesus, you're suffering now from the pain that you caused them. And you're going to have to kind of back off or understand when you try to engage them, they're going to be angry. And I'm going to say something to you, and I hope you don't get mad with me. They're going to be angry at you, and why not? They're going to not trust you, and why not? Now, I know it sounds funny when you have somebody being a realist. I told you, I am a God-anointed, powerful, anointed realist. If you, in the past, abandoned your child, if you, in the past, was abusive and God saved you, look, when the Apostle Paul got saved, the church was, was scared to deal with that boy. How many of y'all remember that in the Bible? When the apostle Paul gave his life to God, the church was afraid to deal with him. Many in the church go like, you know what? I ain't fooling with that boy. Listen, if you were the one who abandoned your child, if you were the one who was abusive and you are changed now, do you understand it's going to take them a process, if at all, to deal with you? If at all. I, and I know this is stuff that people don't like, 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 they, uh, like to talk about, but I got to talk about it. It's not all with what everybody done to you. Sometimes you're the one that did the doing. Hello. And you that did the doing, although you're saved now, ain't no need of looking at them like they need to get repentant, get themselves right with God. They ain't forgiving. Listen, if you believe God, like, he, like he, if you believe God saved you the way he did, then you're going to have to pray and also believe for God to heal the damage you caused. The damage you caused. Look at me. Look at me. The damage you caused. Are, are you hearing me? And don't get mad because it's going to take them a while to process. And But you, you can still show kindness. You can still be open. And they may say, tell you, I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. If that happens, you tried. But brother, Ivory, everything's supposed to be come out just fine because I'm saved. Doesn't always work out that way. I told you, I am a spiritual realist. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I believe the word of God, but I am a realist. And sometimes 
we that have failed our, in our past with our family, abandoned them, hurt them, wounded them, and now we have the Lord in our life, that is not guaranteeing that they're going to change instantly, that everything's just going to jump and, oh, everything's good, everything's cool. I'm just preparing you for the reality of the journey. I'm going to say it again. I'm just preparing you for the reality of the journey. It takes patience. It takes patience. Now, listen, healing is moving forward and holding on to it changes who you are and can become. Healing is moving forward, holding on to it and changes who you are and who you can become. So as you get healed and you're moving forward and you hold on to that moving forward, you be persistent about the changes, it will begin to change you. That's what this is all about. Lord, change me. I've been rejected and abandoned. Change me, Lord. I've been wounded and hurt. Change me, Lord. Anybody get that? Now, let me. Some people hold on to hate because of offense until it consumes the better person they are. Did you hear what I just said? Let me go over here and highlight this. Some people hold on to hate until because of offense until it consumes the better person they are. There's a better you and I, man. There is a better you and I. I'm going to say this to you. You are better than your father's abandonment. You are better than your mother's rejection. You are better than the abuse that happened to you growing up. You are better than the foster homes that you were put in. You are better. You made it. Let the better you be healed. Let the better you be built. Work on the better you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number 13, if you're seeking some type of revenge, as I said earlier, it won't work. If you're seeking revenge, this will not work. Because what will happen is you'll just be a bitter person. And those who seek revenge, let me tell you what usually happens with you. You get mad with anyone who deals with the one you're mad with. And it can even graduate to the point until you're mad and upset with God because you feel that God didn't make them go through what you did. God doesn't think like we do. Life is different than what, 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 we, what we make it out to be. Let me go ahead and finish these last two, and then we're going to go get on out of here with prayer. And once again, usually I'm going to say this to y'all. Y'all that are listening to me on YouTube or listening to me on Facebook Live or Vimeo.com, Usually when I teach like this, people who are hurt and angry, they get mad with me as if I'm saying, you jump right on back in there and, and you just have arms spread wide open and, and just put your head in to get it hurt again. I am not teaching that. But I'm going to tell you this, if you keep holding on and living your past and letting that keep arresting your development, you will not make it to the full potential that God has you. Are you hearing me what I'm saying to you? You will not become who you fully can be if you cannot let that healing process take place. All of us humans, I'm going to put it right here. All of us humans are just straight up messed up. All of us humans mess up. And they admit they did. What more can you ask for a person? We're just human. We're human. All of us mess up. I know it sounds real, real good when we're in these deliverance lines. Well, I was rejected and I wasn't received and I wasn't receptive. Well, yes, we want to pray for what happened with you. But do you realize you've done a few things too? Do you realize that, that we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity? Do you realize that we all have made mistakes? And some of it wasn't mistakes. Some of it was who we were at that time. That was how ignorant we were at that time thinking that we could act a certain way and everything work out just fine. And let's number 15. If you can't make up, get to uh, and get together. If you can't make up and get together, and let me see if you can't make up and and get together, I got news for you. Move on with your life. Boom, did you hear that? If you can't make up and get together, Move on with your life. Now, I'm getting ready to close out of here because I think I have shared uh, a great deal here, and I think that it is a blessing. Uh, I'm going to come out of share stream. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to come out of share stream. As we get ready to go out in prayer, I want to thank y'all for listening. I, I'm going to ask the Father, let's go before the Lord and pray. Father, Lord God, there are many that have heard me. They have been hurt and wounded for real in their family. That wound has changed their life. And Lord God, they're trying to get it back. I pray for those that are going through that process. Lord God, show them whether to hook up or not. Show them whether to pursue or not. Show them how to release and come out of this toxic venom that these wounds cause. Lord God, show them spiritually that we are not just fighting mankind and man's actions, but we have principalities and powers, spiritual strongholds that wants us jacked up in our families. Father God, I ask you also to help them to guard their heart from bitterness and unforgiveness and pure right meanness. Lord, I have seen uh, children that were abandoned and not acknowledged say some of the meanest, hateful things. And when you hear it come out of their mouth, you know they're better. When you hear the words that they say, so cruel and so without, but it came from a wound and a hurt. Lord, heal them. Father, heal me from anything in the past that I try to hold on to. I want you to wash these areas in my life. I want you to do the inner healing. I want you to give me revelation. Give me understanding, Father. Rub the offended parties, change or not. Lord God, let me change more into the better me that you created. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, my friends, you have been listening to Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Now, you, we are found on YouTube. Where we, we, we also do a teaching on Facebook. And if you uh, have enjoyed this message and feel led or, feel, or would like to just bless us, you can bless us. There's our cash app out there, up there. Uh, dollar sign General Ivory Hopkins. Can, you can cap, cash app us a five dollar donation. We would appreciate it. It helps me and Evelyn. And I want to thank you all. Well, look, God bless you. Amen. And I will tell you guys, like I always do, I want you all to remember that God, our God, He's always watching. Not to judge us, not to destroy us, but He's watching to give us direction and to his good, perfect, and acceptable will. Love you guys. Bye-bye.